Hey guys, welcome to Reality Check and to Cologne, Germany. Why? Well, because it's time for part three of our exploration into PC graphics terms and what they actually mean. So I've come to the spiritual home of graphics, Germany. That's right, the very first pixel was actually discovered right here in Cologne. Okay, that's not true, but actually one of the earliest uses of the word pixel is in German, and it's Bildpunkt, which literally means picture point. So there's that. Okay, so I'm also here because of Gamescom, but there's no chance that's getting in the way of me bringing you guys this week's reality check. For me, post-processing is the ultimate, I'm gonna take this, but I'm almost certain I have no idea what it's gonna do box. And you know what? It's actually difficult to say exactly what post-processing is because it can mean a whole load of different things. As the name suggests though, it applies effects after the initial render. This means they can work on the whole frame as one image rather than the individual objects, which has its advantages. So what effects are we talking about? This is great for making movement feel more fast or natural. For example, racing games use this effect heavily to create that feeling of breakneck speed. First person shooters also use it, but to simulate realistic movement and how the human eye gathers that information. Both Bloom and HDR attempt to make lighting more dynamic by realistically simulating the way the human eye or a camera experiences light. For example, both replicate the over-brightness the human eye experiences when moving from a dark space to a brightly lit one, like emerging from a deep dark dungeon into the sunlight, for example. So what's the difference then? Well, HDR is basically Bloom Plus. It's smarter, arguably gives better results, but is also more processor intensive. NVIDIA's PhysX, as the name applies, alters game world physics. When it's turned on, players can interact with objects that have gravitational properties, knocking, throwing, pulling and pushing them. Want to give it a blast? Mirror's Edge and Borderlands 2 are filled with boxes to knock over and flappy things to shoot at with your guns. Such PhysX. So why do we even need things like PhysX? Well, simulating real-world physics is fiendishly complicated. There are just so many damn variables. So, game designers have to come up with fancy algorithms to simulate specific physics. Things like ragdoll effects and Max Payne, specific car handling in games like Forza Motorsport 5, and of course, Tomb Raider's infamous Tress effects. My clients often ask me, how do I get that salon look for my hair without it turning into a solid polygonal lump? I tell them the answer is simple. Tress FX Max Graphic Shampoo, guaranteed to fight the seven signs of aliasing. Tress FX is a real-time hair physics system, and while the intended effect isn't always spot on, Lara's hair fluttering in the wind and reacting to her quick movements can at times look super impressive. But you know what? Understanding hair physics is surprisingly complicated. For example, scientists recently came up with an Ig Nobel Prize winning equation to explain the real life physics of a ponytail. Now this might sound kind of absurd, but predicting the behavior of a ponytail is really difficult due to the various factors involved, including the stiffness of hair fibers, the effects of gravity, and even the presence of curly or wavy hair can drastically change the shape of a ponytail. So yeah, I think Tress Effects does a pretty good job, all things considered. Okay, well that's about all the graphics terms we had left. So this has been a slightly shorter, but significantly more German episode of the show. So make sure you check back next week for more Reality Check. Au revoir. That's French. Buongiorno. That's not even goodbye. Asahi. That's a beer.